ministry direction. He said, relax. Whenever you feel that, <laughs> just relax. Take your time. Have a sip of water. Take a break between songs or play something even faster and harder. Whatever makes you relax. You know, just relax. I'm relaxed. And the more I relax, the more nervous others get. It's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? I relax in the spirit. I rest in the spirit. I have confidence in the spirit. Satan gets scared. Amazing. Anyone who knows me knows this might have been something I should have learned a long time ago, but eh, it's got to happen sometime. <laughs> in a matter of seconds, everything can change. In a matter of seconds. We have no control over what God does. We have no control over what He intends. We have no control over His will. We have no control over God whatsoever. So if today's the day that God says, we need to have a little chat, we have no control over that. Boy, if I had days like that. I hate those days. Sorry. Sometimes I love them, but usually they, usually when I hear, we need to talk, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get it. And getting it isn't so bad, is it? <clears throat> when Jesus was ministering, and he was being criticized constantly, he said, what did you expect to find? What did you expect to find? What did you expect me to be? What did you expect John the Baptist to be? What did you expect me to be? What were you expecting to find? A reed shaken by the wind? I mean, what did you expect to find here? Did you expect to find yet another religious leader that was either A, completely full of crap, B, making things up as they went along, or C, controlled by the flock? Who did you expect to find when you started hanging out with Jesus? Who did you expect to find when you were out there in the desert with John the Baptist? I, I love when he addressed this because he was like, I, I'm, a, I'm a little confused because people constantly look at other people like they know what they are. I have people say to me all the time, oh, that's not you. <laughs> okay. How do you know what's me? I mean, gosh, I mean, I'm a work in progress. You know, I don't even say that's not me. Unless it's blue. <laughs> Generally speaking, I know blue's not me, but then next week I'll probably find like this really cool electric blue blazer and I'll start wearing it and say, ah, now I'm blue. But I had a really cool blue guitar for years. So you never know. Even I don't even know what's me. But what did you expect to find? I, I, I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise. I just like the example because it's so clear to me. You know, you, you come one night and you've never been before and you and you walk in and you get me, but it's not this me, it's that me. I I mean I you had to be like going, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know? I had someone who came the other night who said they were surprised I preached. I said, You're what? You were surprised I preached? Yeah, I went on your website and all your videos, you're singing. I go, Oh, you didn't Google me or YouTube. Go on YouTube and do a search and see the, you know, 2,000 sermons on YouTube. Wow. But I've told you a million times I preach at shows. What did you expect to find? What were you expecting? What did you come out for? If I went around the room and said, um, what did you expect to have happen tonight? What did you have expected? What did, what did you guys expect? What were you expecting? First off, everyone would get really uncomfortable. Now, anyone who knows me knows there is a little bit of joy I get in that moment. That's kind of cool. Because I've been up here, I've been up here sweating and busting strings and making mistakes. I'm not going to play that song anymore. It's too prophetic. And, uh, but what were you expecting when you left your house tonight? What were you expecting? Were you expecting a spiritual experience? Were you expecting to come face to face with God Almighty? Were you expecting 
to just, I don't know, get free entertainment and take a break from reality TV? When you clicked on this video, what were you expecting? I, I, what were you expecting? Were you expecting me to be well behaved? <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows that's the most unsafe position to take with someone like me. Oh, he wouldn't do that. Oh yeah, he would. He has, and he will, again, if God tells him to. I want everyone here and there to really think about what were you expecting, what were you expecting to have happen tonight? Because when I when I'm doing the do, I see such a variety of purposes and cross purposes. You know, church isn't a movie where you go and you sit and eat your popcorn and it can't hurt you. <laughs> it can't come off the screen and get you. That ain't church. Well, it's the church I go to. Well, never been my church. I've always wondered when it was going to happen where the pastor said, you. <laughs> and just said it. I was like, <laughs> you know. I made sure I repented of everything I could think of before I went to church. <laughs> and yet, we go out and we go and watch things. We go and experience things. We go and do things that are in the name of the Lord. And we don't even examine our hearts to say, well, what are we looking for? What are, what are we hoping to get out of this? What are, what are we hoping to give to this? Both. I, I mean, I do. God, I have to. I have to plan what I'm going to give. I plan what I think people need. I have to really pray about it. I have to prepare keep getting my guitar fixed, and I have to constantly seek and search, and yet you, you, you look at any spiritual philosophy on planet Earth, and every single one agrees with one thing, that things happen for a reason, and that if you, wherever you are is where you're supposed to be. You're in the right place. Everyone believes that. I never feel like I'm in the right place, but I'm convinced you guys are in the right place. That I know because everyone else believes that. Every, unless someone's sitting here like, oh, like, 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 what's your name? Charles. Like Charles is sitting here going, I ain't in the right place. I don't know. I don't know how I got here, but the minute it's over, <laughs> cookies or no cookies, I'm going. You're having a good time, right? Are you scared? No. If I move closer, are you going to be scared? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we have. I'm glad you understand the rules. <laughs> He's like, does this couch go back anymore? What were you expecting tonight? Oh, a few more people here. Sorry. A few more people here. A few more people. You know, I was expecting a few more people. That's very intimidating. If there's uh, not a lot of people, isn't it? How do you think I feel? I'm just picturing you guys in your underwear. Don't wear that color again, brother. Don't wear the green? No, the underwear. I picture everybody in the underwear. The color I picture again, don't wear that. It's not flattering. So that's what, you're, that's what you're expecting. You're expecting a lot of people. You didn't tell them? You didn't tell them that I scared them all off? You didn't do anything to help them, did you? What were you expecting? Um, I was expecting music and good music, and I got what I expected. You were saying, oh, that's, wow, I'm sorry, is there something brown on your nose, brother? <laughs> All right, wow, I was expecting good music, and I got it. Wow, you too scared now? Think about, it. You're, speak for yourself, are you getting nervous? You know, I have to ask you guys just so they don't think I singled them out, right? What were you expecting tonight? Good sermon. A good, what's wrong with the music? He likes the music. I like good sermons. Okay. Better say something about the music and the sermon, or else this could really go bad. All right. I'm going to let Ed off the hook because Ed played tonight. That's right. You were expecting good music and you got it. That's right. All right. You owe me. All right. You know what I was expecting? I was expecting God to move. I was expecting the Spirit of God to move. And I was singing and I was worshiping, and I was doing whatever that is I do, that weird combination of singing, worshiping, performing, and waiting. 
So I felt like there was enough of foul ground broken for the Spirit of God to come. So when I opened up my mouth to speak, the Spirit of God would speak through me and minister to the people in the room. And what he told me today all along was that I need to admonish his people to seek spiritual experiences. But what he told me tonight was I need to say that if you are living your life in your flesh, if you are living your life for your flesh, you are in for a huge shock at the end of this road. A huge shock. That it is not just for the thrill and the jollies of walking in the Spirit that He admonishes us to do it. It is because it's a commandment. And it is a commandment because it is, it is His way. It is His way. It is His plan. It is His purpose for us. To know Him, to love Him, to serve Him, and to acknowledge Him on His terms. And whether you've never ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're the star of the evening, we all have a long life ahead of us and a long road ahead of us in learning how to live as He commanded. See, this is the trap that Christians always fall into. It's always us and them. It's us and Him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm much more established in the Lord than I was 28 years ago when I started, and I've got my, my little ministry in Phoenix. But I'm kind of over ministers making non-believers feel like they've arrived, and they haven't. None of us have arrived because we're not dead yet, but when we arrive, we would like good news at the end of this journey. We want, well, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into your rest to be fresh on the Lord's lips. Not, I gave you an opportunity to serve me, and all you did was get your fire insurance to make sure you didn't die and go to hell, but you didn't use squat to serve me. That's bad. But, enter into eternal life, eh, so... Get a little bit of a butt rash on the way in, but we survive. But then, what about, I give you an opportunity to meet me, and you had better things to do. You had better plans. You wanted to watch your TV. You wanted to go be with your boyfriend and girlfriend. Or you wanted to have your drink, or your smoke, or your pipe or your needle, or you just thought religion was stupid. I'm not selling religion. I'm the most unreligious person I know. <laughs> Can't even, I don't even like going to church, man. Unless the music's really good and people really, really love the Lord. But I do really love the Lord, and I do really know the Lord, and I do really hear His voice. And He did set me aside to do a work, to lead people to Him. And tonight, there are people here, and there are people who will watch this video later that need to know that they're running out of time. They're running out of opportunities to submit to his authority. Not mine, his authority. They're running out of time. It is time to bow the knee to Jesus and say, yes, I know who you are. I've heard who you are. I've read who you are. I already know all this. It's time for me to just be obedient. It's time for me to repent. It's time for me to walk with you. It's time for me to live for you. And I'm sorry if I have to become a Jesus freak like that Paisley guy. I'm sorry. It's your problem between you and God. 
It's not easy being Paisley. I love the Lord, and I really, really, really try to do what He tells me to do sometimes. 